What a crazy day. I was getting ready to do a video on my brand new flux powered pose control tool. And then this happened. Black Force Labs, the company behind Flux, Flux Pro, Flux Dev, Flux Schnell, announced Flux 1.1 Pro and the Black Force Labs API. So this is a pretty big deal because as you can see from the image, it's a bunch of blueberries. And a couple weeks ago, this mystery model showed up that was blowing everything else out of the water as far as Mid Journey and Dolly and everything else in quality and aesthetics and it was codenamed Blueberry. So now we know, without a question of a doubt, that that was actually the Black Forest Labs team testing Flux 1.1 Pro. So the announcement says that it's faster and better. What does that actually mean? It means that Flux 1.1 Pro provides six times faster generation than the older model. It also improves image quality, prompt adherence, and diversity. At the same time, they're saying that characters' faces, so human faces, are a little bit better quality. Hopefully it got rid of flux chin. If you'll notice, people always have a dimple in the middle of their chin with the older flux models. Here's where they talk about how it was tested under code name Blueberry, and you can see the results here. They're really impressive. You can see it crushed Ideagram, Mid Journey 6.1, Flux Dev, all of the other models. Dolly 3 is way down here at the bottom. And then you've got Stable Diffusion 3 Medium pulling up the very end of this. But you can see it kind of blows away even Flux Pro 1.0, which was a really, really impressive model. I would say one of the best I've ever used. And here they've got a couple of charts that show off some of the performance versus aesthetic appeal and things like that. And one of the other things it says is coming soon is 1.1 Pro up to 2K image resolution. So that's gonna be a really big deal when that finally drops here soon. I'm looking forward to that. So where can you actually use this today right now? Uh, I've already integrated it on Pixel Dojo, of course. So as of this afternoon, if you head on over to pixeldojo.ai, you can go to your dashboard and jump down into the Create tab. Here you're gonna see a bunch of different options that are Flux powered, but the one we're gonna check out today is the Flux Image Creator. You can see this allows you to create pretty much anything you'd imagine using a prompt selecting an aspect ratio and a model. Now, here in the dropdown, you can see we've got not only Flux Schnell, you have LoRa support as well, Flux Hyper 8 and Hyper 16, Flux Pro, that's the original 1.0 model, and then the brand new 1.1. In addition, I've got a couple other LoRa's of Dev Realism and Flux Dev LoRa. So this is the one that supports up to 20 different custom LoRa models directly within the Flux generations. So today we're gonna take a look at Flux Pro 1.1. We're gonna drop that in and let's have fun with a couple of cool prompts. What better way to test this than to take some old Flux Pro prompts, try them out in 1.1 and see if there's any visual difference. Just so happens that Pixel Dojo has a couple hundred thousand images in the community gallery. I've already generated a couple of images with Flux Pro and I've got to say they were pretty mind blowing, the quality that came back. You can see this one. Uh, the prompt was simply a building in the old part of Lisbon with spray paint that says Pixel Dojo Flux Pro 1.1. And you can see that it has a really natural look to it. It looks like some graffiti that you see when you're walking all over Portugal. Really cool stuff here. But that's not what we want to check out right now. We're going to jump back over to the gallery and we're going to do a filter for Flux Pro. Let's go ahead and randomly select, I don't know, four or five different images here that we can start to check out. Now, one of the cool things about Pixel Dojo that you'll notice is you get all the generation data so you can see the resolution, the model, even the seed that was used to generate it and the prompt down here. So we'll go ahead and just grab this prompt and we'll jump back over. Here was the original image that was generated and we'll see what this looks like in 1.1. Now, if you drop down the advanced options here, you can even enter in a manual seed. So we'll go ahead and add the same seed from the original as well. You'll notice two things here about this model. It doesn't actually support steps or guidance. Now, not that it doesn't support it, but it's locked. So in the API, you can't actually adjust the guidance scale or the steps currently at least. So we're sort of fixed with the defaults, whatever they are internally. All that's left now is to hit that generate button. Interesting look, it's almost like a cell shaded picture. Let's look at the original here. 
And then you can see the one from Flux 1.1 Pro. It's actually quite a bit different. Looks fairly similar from the, the visuals of the face and such, but different look altogether if you kind of look closely. It almost looks like a, what you'd see from a PlayStation 5 game or something. I don't know. It's just, it's a little cartoony and CGI-esque is, I guess, the best way I can put it. Let's try another one here. And it's worth noting, I'm gonna save these to a public gallery, so you can check these out after the fact and have a look at them for yourself. And this one's from one of the subscribers, Creative Concepts. If you wanna check out more of his work, you can do so in the gallery. We're gonna copy this prompt, and this is a really cool image of a sports car with a couple of shoes that have almost like flames coming off of them while it's sitting in some water. Let's see if we can get something back that's similar from this. And again, we're gonna copy the prompt and the seed so that everything is the same. And this one's interesting. It looks like there's almost flames coming off of the car itself too. So you've got these shoes that are made out of fire. You've got flames coming off of them. You've got sort of ash and everything else spread out all over the place. But it's a very different image to that original. And I would say the original looked a lot more realistic if you kind of compare the two sort of side by side. This one's a little bit less realistic looking overall. Kind of like the Flux Pro 1.0 version, if I'm being honest. And here we've got another one from Creative Concepts. This one, in a mesmerizing winter landscape, a snowflake-like woman with long golden hair glides gracefully, adorned in an elegant white snow dress that shimmers like fresh frost. That's actually a really nice image. I love the way the tree looks. I think it's, it's actually got a little bit more detail than the original one. I don't know, the original image was quite nice. Uh, but there's something, I don't know. It's it's a different image altogether, but it's quite nice still. I like the overall aesthetic and look of it. Very cool. I thought this one was really cool. It looks like it's a golden tarantula. So let's go ahead and see if Flux Pro 1.1 can come up with something similar. And this one, the image depicts a stunning gold Egyptian, very, very extremely angry tarantula spider adorned with intricate patterns and designs. And here's what we get back. That definitely looks very, very angry. Look at that mouth with the teeth. That's pretty crazy. So you can see the prompt adherence is different uh, with this model than it was with the original model. So the fact that he said very, very angry, I think that actually had more weight than this one. This one, it doesn't really look angry. It just looks like a golden tarantula. It's a very nice image. I love the depth of field and everything, but it doesn't look as angry as this one. Now, I'm curious to see what would happen if we take out the very, very extremely angry part of this and we just leave the tarantula adorned with intricate patterns and designs. And that one's really cool looking. You see it lost that sort of angry face with the mouth and teeth and everything on the front, but kept a really cool look overall. So go ahead and save this one as well. You can check them out. This one I thought was really cool because it looks like lights refracting through this glass. Maybe there's a person behind it or inside of the glass, it's kind of hard to tell, but the way that the light and the refraction and everything else happens, just kind of an interesting image. Another one from Creative Concepts. So man, you're really killing it in the gallery there. And this one's actually a really simple prompt. Young woman swimming inside of a glass of water, clear blue marble background, selective focus bokeh. Interesting, completely different image. Now, if you look at the person, the person's skin and facial features, details like that, look really good. It also, if you look around the edges, it does look like the light's properly refracting through the glass, though it's kind of hard to tell. But uh, very cool, very different image to the original. It doesn't look like the person's submerged, but uh, cool nonetheless. All right, for our next one, a super cute half Swedish, half Lithuanian woman with flowing white hair strands confidently on the edge of a skyscraper. Pretty specific there, but if you look at the original image, really cool, she's throwing like this kind of futuristic looking bow and arrow, standing on the edge of a building, looking off, you've seen this, the skyline and the city down below. So really cool look on Flux Pro. And here we see the image back from Flux 1.1 Pro. It's a different image. I mean, they're both nice images, but you know, just completely different overall. All right, for the next one, we've got this photo of this woman here, and you can see, we'll take a look at the prompt. Stunning digital artwork by Sasson, inspired by Louis Jover's style, portrays a futuristic and enticing mercenary. Let's see what we get back from Flux Pro. And here we've got the 1.1 version versus the 1.0. 
Again, very different images. I kind of in some in some way still prefer the 1.0 images though, if I'm being completely honest. There's definitely differences in the way that it's adhering to the prompt. So perhaps you need sort of different ways of prompting this. I did see in the documentation that they made some pretty big changes to the large language model or the text embeddings that actually take the prompt and transform that into the image that helps steer the model. So there's definitely some differences there. It's gonna take some time to figure out what exactly those are and how you can sort of steer around them. And this wouldn't be complete if we didn't do something with text. We know Flux is really good at text across the board, but create an image of a Coca-Cola bottle with spider features, including spider arms attached to the sides. Texture of the bottle should remember resemble crow scales and there should be a prominent spider head design on the front. It's actually really awesome the way that came out. Now the original that's over in the gallery actually looks like this. It wasn't created with Flux Pro. This one was actually generated with Hyper Flux 16, the 16 step parameter model from Byte Dance. So both really cool. Yeah, I don't know. This one's got the spider head on the front. Pretty awesome. So there you have it. If you want to check out Flux 1.1 Pro, all you have to do is head on over to pixeldojo.ai. You can start using it right away along with all the other tools. I've got over 20 generative AI tools built in all for one subscription. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, I'm Brian. We'll check you next time. Thanks.